In this video, we're briefly going to look at a couple other important considerations when using diodes. The first is temperature effects. So let's say we're using the same PN junction in a circuit at different temperatures. So let's consider three temperatures, T2, which is a higher temperature than T1, which is a higher temperature than T0. And ultimately, our temperature is going to affect two parameters in that ideal diode equation. It's going to affect our reverse saturation current. And so we've not looked at an explicit equation for that reverse saturation current, but it's going to affect that via changes in our intrinsic carrier concentration. The other parameter that's going to be affected by temperature changes is of course our thermal voltage, V sub T. Again, we're not going to look too much into the calculations there, but we just want to be aware of the basic sort of behavior. Uh, so of course our, our intrinsic, or sorry, our reverse bias saturation current is going to be changing, but we're just going to focus on the forward bias uh, sort of operation because typically that's where we're going to be interested in. So what we're going to have is we're going to have our initial temperature, let's say was T naught. So we have some we have some curve for the forward region that looks like this. So this corresponds to our temperature T naught. If we increase the temperature to T1, what we're going to see is we actually sort of reduce the voltage required to start having that exponential increase kick in. And then of course, if we increase it even more, we're sort of just shifting that curve even further to the left. So what we can say then is ultimately as we are reducing, as we're increasing our temperature, we're reducing our turn on voltage required for the diode. So higher temps lead to reduced turn on voltage. And we'll come back and talk about the turn on or cut in voltage a little more formally in the next video. The second thing that we wanna consider is something called breakdown voltage. So when we were talking about reverse bias, we said, all right, nothing really interesting is happening here. We get a small amount of current, or reverse saturation current. Um, but of course, like with anything, if we push too hard, eventually we're going to break it. So in terms of our PN junction diode, that means that if we apply a voltage that's too large, then we're going to get uh, a we're going to destroy our device essentially. So ultimately what, what we have different mechanisms, but for a couple of the common ones, if we get a large enough reverse bias, so large reverse bias applied to our PN junction is going to result in higher energy electrons that can break other electrons from their covalent bonds. And so what that means is we have then more free carriers and in certain mechanisms, again, we can have those free carriers breaking away more uh, electrons from covalent bonds. And ultimately we're just going to get a larger current. And once we get a larger current in our reverse bias, we no longer have that rectifying behavior in our IV characteristics. So now sort of our device isn't going to be as useful as it was before. It's basically just gonna have a more linear looking relationship. Um, so typical values for this, this large reverse bias, what are, what are those? So typically anywhere from 50 to 200 volts. But again, that's something that can vary drastically depending on the application, uh, the material, the operating condition. Various things need to be considered when we're considering uh, if our breakdown is going to occur. Uh, to put a name, I've, I've mentioned some sort of common mechanisms, but to put some names with that, uh, so common mechanisms. So the one that I was primarily describing earlier is something called avalanche breakdown. And so just as the name sort of implies, maybe we have some high energy electron here, which comes over here and it breaks off a couple other electrons. And then each of these electrons go and they can break off a couple more electrons. And so you kind of see where this is going in terms of, we just get this, this avalanching effect that started with one 
And now if the electrons have sufficient energy, they're breaking off more and more electrons. And ultimately that leads to higher currents. Another mechanism is called Zener breakdown. Uh, the idea is basically the same and we're gonna come back and we're actually gonna talk about Zener diodes a little later on and we're gonna see how being in breakdown isn't necessarily always a bad thing. So real quick, let me just draw what these curves look like. So if we have our current versus our voltage. So notice I can give myself a little more space in our reverse now. Um, so we're saying we have the same sort of forward operation now, we're not really concerned with that. Um, but now if we push too hard in our reverse, we get all of a sudden just a, a really large increase in current. And so this point here would be our breakdown voltage. And so just to be consistent with the, with the textbook, I'll call this BV. And so we can see that once we reach that breakdown voltage, and so let me try to align that a little better, that should line up with that vertical blue line, uh, any more increases in our reverse voltage are just going to continue to increase our current. Um, now we can have different values based on different device parameters, as I mentioned earlier. So we could potentially have another so let's say we have a separate device, which is going to have a larger breakdown voltage. And in most applications, that's going to be a good thing, but not always. And we'll, again, we'll talk about that later. But let's say we have BV2 and BV1. And so the most common parameter that is going to dictate this is the amount of doping in our semiconductor. So if we have a lower amount of doping, typically we're going to have a larger breakdown voltage and if we have a higher amount of doping, we're going to have a lower breakdown voltage. Um, so again, remember our doping is affecting a lot of other things as well, our built-in voltage, uh, our carrier concentration. So we need to consider all of these things as we're designing. Uh, sort of a big picture thing then is if you're using diodes in a circuit, they're going to have something called a PIV or a peak inverse voltage which is typically going to be specified on a data sheet or somewhere by our, our manufacturer, so peak inverse voltage. And so this is a voltage that you don't want to exceed when using the diode. 